through, believe it or not, is the next game. Hey, Teddy Bruschi, if I said DeAndre Hopkins makes the Chiefs the best team in the AFC, believe it or not? Yeah, I say believe it. I mean, these, this is an undefeated football team that just finds a way to win in the end. I mean, that's who they are. And now they added a guy that is highly motivated. This guy's caught a lot of passes, but haven't, hasn't won a lot of or any championships whatsoever. The motivation that he has got to have in himself and for everybody wanting to play for him has got to be so high. Absolutely. I believe it. RC, you buy it? I do buy it. I mean, you think about what you can do now having someone for Patrick Mahomes to be able to depend on, someone for Patrick Mahomes to be able to count on, especially in the intermediate part of the field where we used to think that would be Travis Kelsey. I believe this also gives Xavier Worthy the opportunity to operate in the deep parts of the field without having to worry about oh, yeah. some of those other opportunities. Let's go to the next one. RC, let's talk about your Steelers. If I said they can win a playoff game with Russell Wilson as their starting quarterback, believe it or not? I absolutely believe it. Now, I also believe that they can win a playoff game with Justin Fields mm. as their starting quarterback. But the one thing I loved about what I saw from Russell Wilson and Arthur Smith was the willingness to push the football down the field, actually dialing up the bunch routes and the stack routes and the picks that presented one-on-ones for George Pickens and people like Pat Fryer moved down the football field and then Russell Wilson delivering. Grouse, it has been my observation that no one is having more fun doing anything than Mike Tomlin is not announcing. <laughs> of course, how should we expect this quarterback situation to play? Oh, I, forward. I think Russell Wilson will play this week and they have a bye next week and they'll get in there and figure out what the plan is going <laughs> forward. But uh, Russell Wilson uh, was very good on Sunday night sticking to the plan, which is not something he did well in Denver the last couple yeah. years. So can that continue and can they count on it? All right. And then some speaking of someone for whom it's not going according to plan. Let's talk about Aaron Rodgers. Graz, if I said to some degree, his legacy is on the line with the way the rest of this Jets season goes. Do you believe it or not? I, I do not believe it. I think his legacy is secure. He could enhance it if he wins a championship with the Jets. There's no question about that. But this is a player that, that is one of the greatest we've ever seen to play the position. A surefire Hall of Famer. His legacy is what it is. I don't think he's doing damage to it uh, if they have a bad year in New York. Yeah, I don't think he's doing damage to him because the legacy is he was one of the all-time great throwers of the football mm -hmm. and players, and he still only won one championship. Mm -hmm. This is not going to change that. We're still going to feel the same way we felt about his talent, and the amount of rings that he has will still be won. Yeah, talent. But, but, Teddy, just quickly, this thing has – if this thing continues the way it's going, this is a disaster on a level that I don't think too many people anticipated. What, what, what do you say in response to the question? Like, will it impact his legacy in a negative way if this thing really crashes and burns? <laughs> No, I agree with the guys. I mean, it's, it's, but a great talent is not a compliment for me. I mean, it's, <laughs> so you got, you got a great arm, you threw for a lot of yards and you won a championship, but you, you can't be up there within the conversation with those that have done exceptional things from that, yes. from that position. I mean, there are, there are a lot of Hall of Fame quarterbacks, but there are Hall yes. of Fame quarterbacks that are, shoot in the upper room, right, RC? I mean, you're talking yep. about a different stratosphere of guys that gathered men together and got them all to do things that no one else think they could have done. Now, if Aaron turns this around, like, he's, like RC said, heck yeah, oh my gosh, is it enhanced? Yeah. That's who I'd rather see rather than someone who's got a great talent who can throw the football. All right, we'll get back to that all as we go. In the meantime, Good point, Teddy. It's, a, it's a fabulous football Friday of the whole weekend. What are you watching for? You know what? I want to see can the Bengals stop the run. You know, with the way that Saquon Barkley is playing for this team, you know, whether it's been Ramondre Stevens, uh, Derrick Henry, Chuba Hubbard, they've given up 90-yard rushes early on, but they've sort of fixed those problems as guys like Sam Hubbard, and they've got healthy in between. If they can make the Eagles one-dimensional, I think that Lou Anamarumo has a better chance of stopping them. Graz, Bears at Commanders. What are you watching in that game? Yeah, look, obviously it would be Caleb Williams versus Jaden Daniels, but Jaden Daniels might not play. He's dealing with an injury. So if he doesn't, let's focus on the Bears. Can, can Roma Dunze and Caleb Williams, the star rookie duo for the Bears, can they continue to evolve their connection? I'm interested to see how big a part of the offense the rookie Odunze is coming off of this bye and going forward for the Bears. We'll talk more about this game as the hour continues. Meanwhile, Teddy, Cowboys at 49ers. What are you watching in that game? I mean, of course, it's going to be Kyle Shanahan running the football over and over again. And can Dallas stop it? But eventually, Brock Purdy is going to have to be a quarterback that possibly just does things that makes other people better. Great quarterbacks 
it really doesn't matter who's playing the wide receiver position, the tailback position. They find a way to win football games. A lot of examples of that in the league, starting with Patrick Mahomes. It doesn't matter who he says, who he has. So can Purdy be, can Purdy be that quarterback? You got nobody, everyone's hurt, you still have success. That's an interesting one. Like I made the point, RC, we miss you on Monday mornings. But I made the point. There, he was throwing to people. I didn't even know who they were in yeah. that game. And, and, and no Debo. Is he coming back? He's out of the hospital. He, he practiced a little bit yesterday. So it'll be how he feels as the week goes on. And Ricky Pearsall, God bless him. Yes, and he that's unbelievable. Shot Absolutely. And, and, and so hopefully he'll continue to progress and get more comfortable. But they're really missing a lot of people. And it is Brock Purdy's job to sort of put that on his shoulders. And right? we've, never, we've never had to ask right. Brock Purdy to do this. We went back to last year. And you remember they lost mm -hmm. a couple of games in a the row. There was no Debo Samuels. There was no Trent. Williams, mm -hmm. and that was part of many people's argument of why Brock Purdy couldn't be included in the Josh Allens and the Patrick Mahomes and the Lamar Jackson. Here's that opportunity, but it doesn't start with just him yeah. passing the football. Yeah. You have to use Jordan Mason. You have to use trickery in order to get some people the football in their hands early with your yards after the catch sort of opportunities. And so for me, watching Brock Purdy last week against the Kansas City Chiefs, there were so many decisions that he made that aren't typical of of the way Brock Purdy processes through the Kyle Shanahan offense. Is he pressing? Is he trying to do too much? Or is it the fact that he doesn't have people now on the outside that can win one-on-ones for him? It's going to be an adjustment in this game, even playing the Dallas Cowboys. That said, Teddy, now you're a linebacker. I'm just an, I'm just an announcer. But if, <laughs> I, if I'm watching this season so far and I'm Kyle Shanahan, I'm running the ball on every play. I, there's not one snap that I'm taking from center in this game where I'm not running the ball down the throat of the Cowboys and I'm counting on the fact that I'm going to be able to do to them what every decent running team has done to them this year, and that is run the ball for 200 yards, and that's not a figure of speech. They are literally giving up over 200 yards per game rushing in their losses, Teddy. Yeah, and that's Mason, that's Guarendo. I mean, those guys, I mean, it's got to be, I mean, it's common sense football. If you're Kyle Shanahan, absolutely, that's the goal going in, and it's successful. You write it, yes, but, I mean, you got Dak on the other side, and can Dak keep up? Does Dak do a good job of scoring points on the board? And then is, it is Brock Purdy that he has to do some things that RC and I are talking about. Kansas City did a great job last week of taking away the middle of the field, and yep. that's where Brock Purdy makes his living. You know, you had robbers from from the inside linebacker. You're playing. You got DBs dropping down to rob the middle. I mean, he's throwing interceptions because they're t he's still trying to force those middle of the field throws. So can Dallas replicate that? There's a lot still. There's going to be moments where Brock Purdy's going to have to be the reason during this game, but the run game is, is, is the obvious emphasis. Yes. Let's play a game called What's Your Number? Graziano, Devontae Adams, how many receiving yards is he going to have against the Patriots on Sunday? I'll say 87. I think Aaron Rodgers is going to get Devontae Adams involved. I think he's probably going to be the number one receiver. He's the one who sees the game the same way that Aaron Rodgers does. But against this Patriots defense, I think everybody feasts. Uh, Devontae Adams, 87, Garrett Wilson, whatever whatever he wants. I think the Jets will have a big night. Patriots coming hey, back from London without the bye. Teams tend to struggle in that scenario. Oh, Teddy, let's get a number from you. Josh Allen passing yards versus Seattle. How many? Okay, I've never been good with numbers, fellas, but I'll give you a Ooh. number here. How about, how about 275, okay? Geno's going to throw that up and down the field on the other side of the ball. Uh, Josh with Coop, you know, hopefully Amari Cooper, he knows what to do now after another week of practice. You don't have to tell him on the line of scrimmage. He'll have a good day. How about 275 yards for Josh Allen? It's a lot of yards. Big it performance. A lot of yards. And then, Graz, let's come back to you here. The, the showdown that we may not get is Caleb Williams versus Jaden Daniels, but how many total yards do you think Caleb will have rushing plus passing? 375. I think it's a big day for Caleb Williams. Whoa. Coming off the bye against Ooh. a defense that has not really been – Stellar uh, this year. I, I think I think the Bears have a big game. If Jaden Daniels doesn't play, and again, he hasn't practiced yet this week, and I think they're going to be cautious with him. If he doesn't play, I think this is a big day for the Bears. Yeah, if, if not, it'll be Marcus Mariota. So that's where I was going to begin. Mm -hmm. yep. I, I think the expectation, Shefty said yesterday, when coaches say week to week, Right. That's the new coach speak for he's not playing. Day-to-day -day means he's playing. Week-to-week -week means he's not playing. No practice Wednesday, no practice Thursday. They have left open the possibility that he practices today and that they make an assessment based on how he looks and feels off of that. 
But if there's any question at all, they will sit him out. He's too important to their yeah, future. Yeah, absolutely. Okay, so, RC, you, you do Monday night countdown. Yes. Teddy and I do Sunday countdown. If there's one thing I've learned from working with Teddy Bruschi this season, he's not easy to convince. No. Like, <laughs> Teddy needs to see it. He's not from Missouri. Hey, I mean, I'm going to say this, too. Yeah. I work with Bill Belichick now. Yeah. yeah. He's probably even harder to convince, and he loves that dude. Yeah. So, yeah. I'm sure a little bit of that rubbed off on Teddy. Fair enough. So, so Teddy, he was the <laughs> yeah. last guy who was going to buy into the Texans. He was the last guy who was going to buy into Sam Darnold. These are the conversations we've had. The Bears have won a bunch of games in a row, and their offense has exploded. they played lesser competition. Are you buying into the Bears as a legit playoff team right now? No. <laughs> <laughs> it's another team. It's another team that I'm not buying. It's It's... I mean, they haven't even gone through the North, and that's where, shoot, they could go 0-6 in those games because real competition is coming. Uh, they've got the toughest schedule coming up in the entire NFL. Um, Caleb still has plays where it's like, yep, that's a rookie out there. I mean, mm -hmm. I mean, they've, they've done some great things with them. I mean, Waldron's calling some great plays. I mean, this, this is, it's all positive for the Chicago Bears. I mean, we're talking levels now in terms of yeah. playoff teams, wild cards, division champions that I don't think they're there yet. They're on their way, but no, I'm, I'm definitely not on the Bears train in terms of either winning this division or being a wild card team. The, the learning curve is coming for Caleb Williams. Cindy, put the picks up, I mean, the schedule up, if yeah. you would, please. Go but see, ahead, but like, and, and like, that's the hard thing, and that's why these contenders conversations are difficult. It's not to say that the Chicago Bears aren't a better team or that they can't be trending in the right direction, but you also have to realize they're in the yeah. toughest division yeah. in football. Mm -hmm. The Detroit Lions, the Minnesota Vikings, the Green Bay Packers. In order to be a wild card team, that means you got to finish in front of at least one of those teams. Mm -hmm. And you also have to find a way to not lose every game that you play against them. We've watched Caleb Williams continue to grow throughout this season. Great against the Carolina Panthers, great against the Jacksonville Jaguars, but who is it? Yeah. Right? And so now when you get into some of these difficult games and your young quarterback and your team faces adversity, how do you grow from that? And also, how do you finish some of those games with wins? So there's still a lot to be seen from the Chicago Bears, but Early on this season, there are a lot of positive signs. That's why I kind of liked for them that their division games were all at the end of the year because right. they've been able to do some growing, mm -hmm. right? Like Caleb Williams is a better player now than he was a month ago. Their defense has played pretty That's well, good. right? So, like, they might be in better shape by the time they get to week 11 they start playing those division games than we might have given them credit for. It's a team that is that you can see week over week improving. They could literally be, like, the sixth best team it, in the NFC, the, the, the but be the worst this. team. I mean, when What's you, when that, you, Teddy? Yeah, when a quarterback goes through their, their I mean, his Rolodex is, is just so empty in terms of what Caleb needs to see and what he needs to learn yeah. from. The yeah. defense, great players. I love T.J. Edwards. I mean, I love Jalen mm. Johnson. These, these players Johnson. Are, are doing great, and their, their defense is, is highly ranked. But it's like, you know, you always take those rankings with a grain of salt and realize – you know, what they have coming and who they've played, I, I, agree with, I agree with Ryan because, I mean, this is the progress of a young quarterback, you know, mm -hmm. with, a, with, a, with a team that he is supposed to be the leader of. I mean, he is going to learn as he goes. Yeah. This, but this was supposed to be a showcase, right? Like, yeah. and, and that's yeah. the hard part yeah. about Jaden being banged yeah. up. You wanted yeah. to see number yes. two and number one play Absolutely. against one another. And, and this is just my opinion. I, I don't put anybody else. I feel more certain about the things I know about Jaden Daniels yeah. than the things I know no about Caleb Williams. And so it would have been great to see those two compete against one another, but also what they could do against those uh, – defenses they were facing because, as Teddy said, the Chicago Bears are pretty good on that side of the ball. I would have loved to see that challenge. And the commanders, while improving, have not been particularly good on defense.